Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to show you guys how to use our new Amtrak map tool to plan your next trip. Okay, so we get lots and lots of questions about planning a trip using uh, the Amtrak map and Rob has put together an incredible tool for you guys. Um, our very own map that breaks down all the different segments and where each train goes. And we want to share that with you guys and kind of walk you through the process of planning a trip using our new Amtrak map tool. Some of the reasons it's important to know where each train begins and ends are if you stick with a named train, it makes for an easier trip because you'll have less delays and it's also often cheaper. Correct, especially if you're using um, the USA Rail Pass, this is going to be uh, very helpful for you to be able to keep those segments in, in a better order as you plan out your trip. Yes, so on this map, we show you here real quick that each color corresponds to a named train. So you can see up here this kind of bright pink one is the Empire Builder, the green one is the California Zephyr, and there's a key down here at the bottom to show you which uh, color corresponds to each train route. Now, there are over 40 routes, so some of the colors do look a little similar, but if a color is disconnected in a long manner, like this pink at the top, is not the same as this pink over here on the right. They are a little different shaded, uh, but it should be clear that those are not the same train. Uh, we have them broken down by region for you also, and that way you can zoom in a little bit closer and see so we have more maps like that. And all these maps are available on the website, Grounded Life, travel.com and then you'll just need to click on the maps logo or the maps button from the uh, drop down menu so we also have these broken down into states as well so you'll also find on the website that we have it broken down by each state so if you're looking at the white dots the white dots are telling you that that is a station but as you're looking at the big picture, you see the big blue dots, and those are actually telling you the terminus stations for that particular train. So you'll know where it starts, where it ends, and then you'll see the white dots in between, and that will tell you where it stops along the way. The other thing um, that is also going to be helpful is if you head to the pages also for each named train, we'll give you a really good idea of different vacations that you can plan. We'll tell you a little bit about the terminus stations and we'll also share with you uh, hotels where you can stay at the terminus stations if you need that for your trip as well. So when you're drilling down a little bit more into the regions of the country, you can see on this map here, we've got just the cross country routes listed and the West Coast routes. That's all you'll need here for the West Coast. And then we also will share with you the Northeast area, which is the most crowded uh, area in the whole map. It's incredibly crowded because so many trains go through New York, Philadelphia and Washington DC mm -hmm. that you'll need to look at a map to know how many different options you have going that <laughs> way. So as you can see when you're in the Northeast you have tons of choices but when you're going uh, through the Midwest some most of these states only have one choice. You can see what that choice is for the train uh, to get to wherever you want to go. Another thing you may notice is that there are definitely hubs on this map. And Chicago is one of the biggest hubs. It's actually the biggest hub, and it has the most trains coming in and out of it. So if you're connecting from the East Coast to the West Coast, you will be going through Chicago and probably changing trains there because there are no trains that arrive in Chicago and continue on further than that. Uh, the other two main hubs that you'll see here are New York City and Washington, D.C., and then out west, I would say a minor hub is Los Angeles, although not nearly as big of a hub as the the, the train the stations on the East Coast. Right. Yes. There's a lot less kind. Of, I mean, that's really the only hub on the West Coast uh, per se, because several trains come in there, um, and it does have a nice big Union Station there in Los Angeles, and several trains 
up and down the, the West Coast also travel through Los Angeles. Now, I wanted to give an example of how this can be helpful in determining how many trains you'd have to get on. Because you may be thinking, I'm here in uh, Missouri, a little bit outside of St. Louis right here, and I want to get over to Mississippi. Well, on the map, it doesn't look very long. It should be just, you know, about an eight-hour ride. But looking at the map, you can see that you would have to ride the Missouri River Runner to St. Louis. You would have to ride one of these trains up to Chicago. You'd have to ride the city of New Orleans all the way down to New Orleans and then the Crescent up to Mississippi. So mm -hmm. just to go those couple of states, you would need at least four trains to do it. Now, if you're going to go, you could go a lot further than that if you just wanted to go to Kansas City, you could make it all the way out to Los Angeles on just two trains from the same location going on the Missouri River Runner and then the Southwest Chief. So if you live in an area where you're not quite sure where you can get to or how many trains it will take, this map is going to really help you uh, because like where we live in Atlanta, we can't get to Chicago directly. Uh, we have to take the Crescent to New Orleans or to North Carolina and then go from there. So uh, we know that we can get down to New Orleans and then get all the way out to the West Coast on the Sunset Limited or the Texas Eagle. Correct. So it's just a matter of uh, trying to figure out, do you want to go to one of the terminus stations? Um, because the other, the other thing that you'll find, especially on these uh, cross-country routes, is that sometimes they come through a city maybe in the middle of the night. And so yes. you'll end up thinking, well, I don't really want to get on the train at 2 a.m. Uh, so you may look at that schedule, at the train schedule, and try to figure out, do you want to get on at the time that it comes through the closest city to you? Or do you want to try to get to one of the terminus stations and add on a little bit of time to your vacation or to your trip? Another thing I wanted to highlight was uh, some vacation ideas that we get asked about a lot. And the one that we did that, that people view on our YouTube channel a lot is we went, uh, we started over here on the West Coast and went from... Uh, all the way up the coast starlight up to Seattle and then went from Seattle on the Empire Builder all the way to Chicago and then took the California Zephyr all the way back to Emeryville. So three trains, coast starlight, Empire Builder, California Zephyr, we saw almost the entire country in three <laughs> trains, yes. <laughs> yes, and we've already obviously seen a lot of the East Coast since we've spent most of our lives on the East Coast, so we were trying to cover as much of the Midwest, the Great Plains, and uh, out West as well. So if you're trying to put a trip together like this, a tip that I have for you is there are only really two trains that go north-south, east, uh, west of Chicago, and that's this orange train here, which is the city of New Orleans, and the orange train out here, which is the Coast Starlight. So you can connect any one of these cross-country routes with a couple of these uh, north and south routes and make a big square or a triangle, and it's just to get back to where you started. Now, on the East Coast, you can do a lot of things because so many trains connect in to D.C., Chicago, and New York. So a couple I'll point out here are You've got the Cardinal, which is this pink train, uh, and you've also got the Lakeshore Limited, which is this kind of light green train, which goes to New York and to Boston from Chicago. Uh, you've got a couple others that do that. So you can make kind of a loop, and you can spend time going all the way up and down the East Coast. So people often ask us, what's the best type of trip mm -hmm. vacation? Uh, those are some of the ones that, that we would recommend. Right, and then a lot of people do also ask about getting to Florida uh, using Amtrak as well from either the Northeast, from this region, uh, or from the Midwest looking to get down into Florida. So what are some options we can look at? Here? Yeah, so from Florida, you're gonna be looking at the, uh, we'll pull up, this northeast map you've got to get on one of these trains that is going to continue on down here so this orange train uh this green train or this brown train and those are going to be the silver star the silver meteor and the palmetto mm -hmm. well the palmetto is actually going to stop in georgia the ones that go all the way to florida are just the silver star the silver meteor 
and the auto train okay. uh, from the northeast. But only the Silver Star and the Silver Meteor will go all the way up to the New York area. The auto train is going to stop in Virginia and not take you all the way up to New York. Okay. So if you were doing the auto train, say if you were a snowbird and wanted to go down to Florida, you would need to get to Virginia with your car, load up on the auto train there, and then head down to Florida. Yes, there. exactly. You'd need to drive there, get on, and then you could take a ride. And, and those are all overnight trains, uh, so you, you can get roomettes on those. Another thing kind of to take note of here is that most of the trains east of Chicago are going to be uh, view liner trains and most of the trains west of Chicago are going to be super liner. There's a few that are different but for the most case uh, that is going to be what mm -hmm. they are. So as you're looking at reviews on our channel of uh, what the roomettes and the rooms look like, keep in mind the super liner and the view liner rooms can be different and the trains can be different right uh, yes. for different features yes. on so those make trains. Sure, yeah make sure just to, to watch those videos because it'll really show those differences to you because there are differences um and services are a little bit different as well available on between the view liner and um so another thing to to keep in mind here is that uh some of these routes you can see here down here the texas eagle and the sunset limited both will go from los angeles uh to here and they split off here in the middle of texas or like to carbondale you could take the city of new orleans but you could also take these other two trains here and the only difference is going to be on these and like in the northeast where you have so many trains up here going through there's multiple trains going from philadelphia to dc uh, they're all going to get you there. So really you want to look at when you're booking them, which one has the best time and which one has the best price. Or if you're looking at a room, maybe one of them has a room that, that's available mm -hmm. and one of them doesn't. Right. So you really have a ton of options as far as uh, time of day. Right. You know, if you're going from Boston, anywhere from Boston to Washington, there's going to be multiple, multiple trains a day and you you're gonna have uh your pick you could go early in the morning mm -hmm. afternoon or late at night whereas if you are trying to get from chicago to seattle it's just this one train mm -hmm. and it's only going to go once a day so right. that's just the train you got to get on it and you also need to book your tickets a lot quicker on those right. because they will sell out mm -hmm. most of the time on the east coast these trains you'll be able to find something last minute right uh, but these cross-country trains where there's only one and on some of these it's only a few times a week uh, you need to get those tickets quite a bit ahead of time yeah right and i think that that's what's important about uh, using this map tool and also being able to look at the the particular states as well because like you said you know in texas if you want to get on texas is so huge obviously if you want to get on in a particular city you want to be able to see the breakdown of the actual state and where it goes through and where the different stations are and that way you'll be able to plan out your trip a little bit better so make sure you're using all of the tools on our website groundedlifetravel.com uh, because we're going to help you really break that down um, we're, we're trying to break down some of the hurdles that we saw as we were trying to plan trips and I think these are going to be the most useful and helpful for you as you're planning trips across the country or north and south yeah because you don't have to ride the train all the way so you could we got on in New Orleans rode all this way mm -hmm. out here on the Sunset Limited got off in Tucson out here in Arizona you don't have to ride it all the way to Los Angeles right. uh, frankly we got off in Tucson because the train got into Los Angeles so early we didn't want to <laughs> wake up at 5 a.m. which is when it was going to arrive uh, so we got off in Tucson and rented a car and drove around there but that's going to give you just options to to do the vacation that you want to do on your terms uh, with your budget and get you the best value for your money uh, knowing what you can do exactly so hopefully this was helpful to you guys uh, make sure that you share this with your friends as well don't forget to subscribe to the channel guys give us a like on the video leave us a comment if you have any questions about a trip that you're planning and we'll see you hopefully on the rails